Intussusception Introduction Intussusception is a significant medical condition characterized by the invagination of one part of the intestine into another, causing an obstruction. It's notably prevalent among children aged 6 to 36 months and primarily affects the ileocecal junction in over 90% of pediatric cases and 95% idiopathic. While often linked to intestinal lymphoid hyperplasia in young children, older individuals may experience intussusception due to a pathologic lead point. Clinical Presentation The classic manifestation of intussusception involves a triad of symptoms, though this combination is observed in only about 15% of cases. Episodic, crampy abdominal pain The child experiences severe, colicky abdominal pain in intervals, often leading to crying and distress. Current jelly stools The passage of blood and mucus in the stool, resembling current jelly, is a late symptom indicating bowel ischemia. Palpable abdominal mass a sausage-shaped mass, generally felt on the right side of the abdomen, is a significant indicator. Rectal examination. Occult or gross blood is found in 60 to 90% of cases. Sign of dance. An empty feeling in the right iliac fossa. Children may also exhibit vomiting, initially non-bilious, which can become bilious as the obstruction progresses. Episodes of lethargy or altered consciousness, resembling meningoencephalitis, can occur with advanced stages of the condition. Radiological Investigations Intussusception, a condition where part of the intestine folds into an adjacent part, can lead to serious complications without prompt diagnosis and treatment. Radiological investigations play a crucial role in diagnosing this condition, especially in pediatric patients. Here's an overview of the primary radiological modalities and their findings associated with intussusception. Plain X-ray film. Plain abdominal X-rays can show signs indicative of small intestinal obstruction, which may suggest intussusception, including features of small intestinal obstruction. General signs of bowel obstruction may be visible. Abdominal soft tissue density. In some cases, specific signs can be observed, such as Target sign A soft tissue mass with a concentric area of lucency, representing mesenteric fat, within the intussusception. Meniscus sign A crescent of gas within the colonic lumen that outlines the apex of the intussusception, indicating its presence within the bowel. Barium enema Barium enema is both a diagnostic and therapeutic procedure for intussusception with characteristic signs. Claw sign. The rounded apex of the intussusception protrudes into the contrast column, resembling a claw. Coiled spring sign. Edematous mucosal folds of the returning limb of intussusception are outlined by the contrast material, resembling a coiled spring. Ultrasound. Ultrasound is highly sensitive and specific for diagnosing intussusception, showing distinct signs. Target sign or bullseye sign on transverse scan. This sign represents the cross-sectional view of the intussuscepted bowel, showing layers of the intestine within an intestine. Pseudo-kidney sign on longitudinal scan. This sign indicates bowel edema and the incorporation of mesentery into the intussusception, resembling the appearance of a kidney. Management. Non-operative reduction using hydrostatic, liquid, or pneumatic air pressure by enema is a treatment of choice for an infant or child with ileocolic intussusception who is clinically stable and has no evidence of bowel perforation or shock when appropriate radiologic facilities are available. Enema reduction has high success rates in children with ileocolic intussusception. In settings in which non-operative reduction is not available, for example, in resource-limited countries, patients with intussusception usually should be managed with surgical reduction. Operative intervention. Required if non-operative measures fail or if peritonitis is present, options include ileocolectomy with primary anastomosis. Recurrence. Recurrence rates post-hydrostatic reduction range from 5 to 10%, while post-operative recurrence is between 1 to 4%. 
typically managed by hydrostatic reduction again, with a third recurrence warranting operative intervention to identify any lead points. Image-based discussion. Here are the ultrasound findings in a child with intussusception. Image A. A grayscale ultrasound image demonstrates a classic bullseye mass lesion, arrow, in the mid-upper abdomen where the transverse colon is typically located. Image B. Color Doppler demonstrates persistent flow within the ileocolic bowel involved with the intussusception. Here's a plain film of a child with intussusception that shows a small intestinal obstruction. Notable are a dilated small bowel and the absence of colonic gas. Here's an image of a barium contrast enema showing intussusception in the mid-transverse colon. The patient is in a prone position. Here's an image of a three-year-old girl undergoing pneumatic enema reduction for intussusception. Image A. Air serves as a negative contrast, leaving the intussusception visible as a soft tissue meniscus density in the ascending colon. The tip of the enema nozzle can be seen within the rectum. Thick arrow. Image B. Following successful pneumatic reduction of the intussusception, there is resolution of the prior soft tissue density in the ascending colon and air is now identified within the ileum and distal small bowel. Here's an image of a five-month-old boy undergoing pneumatic enema reduction for intussusception. Image A. The rectum and colon are distended with air, and the intussusception is identified as a persistent soft tissue meniscus density in the region of the cecum. Asterisk. There is no air in the ileum and distal small bowel, indicating that the intussusception has not been reduced. Image B, non-reducible intussusception, asterisk, complicated by bowel perforation during pneumatic edema reduction attempt. There is diffuse pneumoperitoneum, or free air, which is best seen as a rim of lucency around the liver surface. Arrowheads. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.